before we kind of leave Orville a little bit, Mags, I want to get back to this first episode where, because you didn't have context, I think of for me, because if I had any least favorites, it was the very end of season two where you have like some time travel stuff and it gets real weird. And season episode one of season three was kind of cleaning some of that up. But I think what was heavy was what kind of what Brandon, I think you were saying earlier about like, what are we going to do with Isaac? What's our context with Isaac? And I, the home run for me is, Max, didn't you feel like you just you you love this character and he's emoting, but he has no he's just he's just two lights. He doesn't even have eyes. He has two lights for eyes. The, but the mannerism stuff is just it's brilliantly done. You know, with of course coming in without any context, I actually connect with the character, <laughs> even mm. though he couldn't emote because I could. I don't know how to describe it, but it's like I could see. I could see his emotions without seeing them, hmm. um, and it's 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 strange where the care how well it's not really strange. It's really well done how a writer can write a character and have at least at least one person have that connection with a character who can't even show emotions. That's good. Right. That's at least good writing in my in my book because it you know and at the end of the day you know people are going to connect to certain characters differently, but it's. You know, the, the way he cocks his head or the mm -hmm. way he walks or even some of the particular words that he uses and the angle. But also it's 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 also the camera work and the way that the other characters around him, you know, it draw they draw each other out in terms of their character development. And I I could to I actually was sad that Isaac did what he did mm -hmm. and he doesn't even emote, but he. It's like the thing, the way they presented it in such a way, and you know, for spoilers who haven't seen that episode yet, um, you know, he self self deletes himself because he thought that was efficiently the best way to make everybody happy. But yet he came to that conclusion in a different manner, but a conclusion that still gave the same results, which you know the audience felt terrible. So yeah. it's just it's really well done. Yeah, Ironcaster, I think, points it out beautifully is that Isaac, Isaac presents something of a blank template. We can all e uh, easily self in insert ourselves and really feel for him. I couldn't agree more. And I also think exactly. of what you're saying, Mags, because Steve Ransom was pointing out how, how uh, e uh, emotional R2D2 can be with all of its beeps and twirls and lights and whatever, where we get so much less of that with Isaac. But what was, I think, brilliant was the humans outdo Isaac at his own logic. Like when the scene with the doctor. And she's like, well, no, but you haven't thought about this. And she sort of like gives you this big, you know, spoilery, like, oh, by the way, you, you know, you didn't think about that. I thought, I thought it was really, really good. So, um, cause the emotions that Isaac portrays is very subtle. Like you were saying, Max, like the way the, the hands and fingers move, arm levels, tilting of the shoulders, head, those kinds of things. And even just the type of phrasing that he uses just to change that. Oh, wait, let's see. Chris Persia says, um, I disagree that Isaac does emote, just not facially or perhaps verbally, but in the spirit of old silent era acting, he emotes physically. Yeah. Okay, Ooh, that's, that's a I'm good point. Get. I so like that's that. What that's what I'm trying to get at, I guess. So, Awesome. Well, Mr. Dr. Professor showed up. So, hey, there he is. Yeah, Hi, Ryan. You, Ryan. Hang in there, man. Hope you're doing well. So, um, yeah, man. Listen, I think we all agree, man. I, uh, Orville, Orville's top notch, man. This is cr I'm shocked. This is so good. I, I'm perfectly honest. Not a Seth MacFarlane fan. Some of the jokes are a little weird and out there sometimes. They just, he does seem very, even if I was being a writer in today's time, I would probably try to write jokes that would be more relevant to now. But he has no problem making 80s and 90s references like off the cuff. Like, I don't understand. Like, I was like, okay, that seems like an obviously dated joke, but you know, the show just keeps moving, just keeps plowing through. So kudos to them. It's great stuff. Um, Right? And I'm not 